everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and basically anything we find interesting. I am Vince Stone, that is Joe Bryant, and together with you, watching this live on Twitch, you know you're supposed to be working, yeah, yeah, we were talking about that in the pre-show, go back and check it out if you're a patron. TwitchCon is coming up in uh, Berlin, I think it is. TwitchCon Europe. Amsterdam, I think. Amsterdam, somewhere yeah. in that area. I was watching um, a Twitch streamer, Hitch, who rides bikes across the place, and him and his girlfriend are doing the tandem thing. I'm watching it for the chaos of them two trying to figure out how to work a recumbent tandem, tandem bicycle. It is yeah. amazing. <laughs> and, you know, they're starting from uh, Bordeaux and Le France and doing that so that's been a fun watch so oh, cool. far not as cool as getting everybody's getting cases for their steam decks yes. pedro got one that looks i don't know like a diseased yeah. orange but he got the he got the skin that was white and orange yeah whereas i actually got a rubber case a rubber pink case and this this came from aliexpress okay <laughs> alibaba yeah and actually, I got it in a week. I was amazed. <laughs> so, but it, it it's very nice. It's a beautiful, uh, it, it's the only one I could find that was pink. So I grabbed it and it's been very nice. I I like I like it because my hands uh, don't sweat <laughs> when I'm using it now. <laughs> like, like when we're playing uh, uh, Track Mania, I don't sweat when I'm <laughs> holding it. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got a nice Very sturdy nice. case. You can just smash your uh, Steam Deck up against that cabinet right there a few times. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of funny. The only reason I, do, I don't normally need to get cases because I'm so gentle with my all my uh, computers and hardware, but uh, is when we go to scale, there will be a lot of people with Steam Decks, and I want to be able to differentiate mine from the world. <laughs> What what we're saying is Jill's gonna be mad when she sees somebody else with a pink one. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but finding this one was actually <laughs> it took it took quite a while to find this mm. one. <laughs> so yeah, track matey, you've been playing on that. We're having a good time with that yeah. on Tuesdays. We did that. Yeah. It, me and Jill both found a map that just beat us. I'm like, oh, I can't get around this one. But yeah. this is good. This is good. <laughs> this is the way we do this stuff. Um, because it's physics platforming and we have all week to practice on it for Friday where we do game giveaways for the top three spots. If you want to participate, all the information is in the Discord. It's there. Come say hi. We'd love to have you come play with us. But I saw a couple of things. The big one uh, is a thing I've been trying to get a hold to for months. I've talked about it on the show a couple of times. And I've not even mentioned what it was because you just couldn't buy it. And I'm not that type of person. I had one here in the studio, mm -hmm. but it was defective. And I thought I was just like scored. I'm like, I'm going to be able to have this video together it's going to be done so when this thing's widely available no such luck it's still not widely available but what i do have is the mm, mm, <laughs> you're like an old boom box remember yeah boom boxes? <laughs> there you go <laughs> this is an ultra voice one um it's a channel strip voice processor so it's got all the things on it you know like a mic preamp compressor deesser enhancer so nice. expander gates outputs and most importantly, because I know you're thinking you're saying, like, then that's just a channel strip. Yeah, it is. But it's got a USB audio interface built into it, which is the, oh, wait a minute, you know, because you're sitting there like, well, you know, I can get a DBX channel strip. Like, yeah, you could. But then you're going to have to plug that into your audio interface and all that. This is everything in one piece, which is the novel idea. Don't even know if it works with Linux yet. It just showed up. So stay tuned for that. I'll definitely um, be dropping a little bit more information on that topic in our Discord, and uh, I'll have that up for patrons a little bit later, hopefully by the end of next week. But I want to talk about our favorite company, Microsoft, because I saw something when I was browsing Reddit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell us about it, man. Through Reddit. You know you're on Reddit when you're supposed to be working. You're like, yeah, yeah I'll get back to that in a minute. Microsoft really wants the kids to use edge they do like so yeah. bad that they're willing to do this look at this <laughs> search being on microsoft edge for five days search with being for microsoft with, with, uh, my brain doesn't want to process this <laughs> you search with being for five days and you get 330 mine coins 
uh, when you join Microsoft Rewards. So, <laughs> uh, that's okay. On one hand, I can appreciate just how dystopian and dark that is. Yeah. Like, how do we get the kids <laughs> to use Edge? <laughs> However, reading through, you know, it's Minecraft up, uh, skews to a younger audience. And of course, it's Reddit too. Younger audience. Um, Reading through the comments wasn't like, oh, this is a great idea. This is wonderful. We'll start using Edge now. It was a lot of people going, yeah, just make sure you, you do it for the bare minimum days, then you can get rid of Edge. No one likes Edge, not even for that. But they're willing to take your mine coins, but that's it. No, I was like, okay, kids aren't as gullible as I was afraid to. But Microsoft, come on, really? Yeah, that's kind of shady. That's not kind of <laughs> shady. That's directly turkey. <laughs> <laughs> That that's a that's a van with free candy written on it, Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. dark. It is dark. So <laughs> that's enough bashing on Microsoft, and I'm just lying. Let's start the show off right. <laughs> yes, more Microsoft <laughs> bashing. <laughs> this this just blew my mind. It really did. Uh, no astronomical pricing and paid open source free copycat applications anymore right to which i didn't have anything to say to this when i first read this because it's like this was allowed in the first place and we're looking at the microsoft store there's a picture here go back and watch the video version if not where things like the gimp yeah. and other open source mm -hmm. applications were being posted paid 9.99 there's one there's a regular gimp for free and next to that, there's one for $9.99 and from just, you know, Jim decided to post it, charge $9.99. What do you get for $9.99? You just get an open source copy of Gimp. This was allowed. So behold, this new innovative <laughs> change from the fine people at Microsoft will prohibit publishers from charging fees for software that is open source and generally available for free. Mm -hmm. It's about time, Microsoft. It's I, about time. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. And I know. I know. I, this was really a travesty to me. <laughs> it was just, I knew this had been going on. I'd even uh, seen uh, uh, my, uh, actually my cousin's computer <laughs> with the, the GIMP, the paid version of the GIMP in the store. <laughs> I was like, oh, I rolled my eyes. We know you're covering up. You spend a lot of time in your Microsoft store. No, I only oh, see yeah. it when I'm at other people's All houses. All the time. <laughs> um, now, this was a problem with OBS, you know, like last year. I don't know if it was in the Microsoft store, but this is not the first time this has happened. I know OBS had a problem mm, yeah. with um, people repackaging OBS. And, you know, I'm not talking about slobs, by the way. I'm not talking about Streamlabs OBS, but completely malicious actor that was like straight up putting you know malware into the package as well and trying to trick people i think it was like obs-project.com to like they went so far as to buy google ads so when yeah. you search for obs the first results was the malware um you know it's not the first time this has happened i was just surprised that this was allowed at all in any way shape form or fashion because that, that there's a lot of confusion there yeah absolutely and you know I know Strider's listening right now. Can you imagine, you know, somebody showing up on the Lutris GitHub or getting an email of like, where's my paid support? I purchased this from the... Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, uh, my goodness. So this is just third-party shenanigans, you know, people taking advantage of Windows users who unknowingly, you know, pay for free and open source products. And a lot of times, unfortunately, there's the stigma if you don't play pay for your software it isn't good so a lot of people get stuck <laughs> in that way of thinking and uh, uh get taken advantage of it advantage of because of it no it's free open source software and it and it's beautiful software and it doesn't need to be behind a paywall <laughs> I want to hear from our brothers and sisters out there using <laughs> the Windows Store. Do you normally use that? Is that where you go to get software? I genuinely don't know. Yeah. Back in my day, when I was surrounded by Windows users, uh, everyone would just go to have a like a list of websites. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, and I still run into that, at, at least on the audio side, from people saying, well, I went to Focusrite's website or I went to Motu's website. And I don't see the Linux drivers. This is, just, just plug it into the box and it'll work. What? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Linux, kids. Now, we talked about Firefox snaps about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. And yeah. you know what? Yeah. Find people over at Canonical. They're not going to give up. Mm -hmm. They're back with part two of how yes. they're going to make snaps snappy real quick. Uh, I went through this, you know, just kind of looking at it and like, oh, okay, I don't envy the person that has to write this and do this. You know, the startup times were kind of rough. Mm -hmm. Still some hitches. Uh, the big one being hardware acceleration is still kind of hit or miss with the Firefox snap and yeah. the Firefox snap and Flatback are currently unable still to interact with network shares, but... There's some progress, right, Joe? Oh, absolutely. Um, they've done a lot of work on the the language packs. Uh, there's a large number of them that launch when you you know start fire the Firefox Snap for the first time, and you know this contributes to it taking a long time to launch. And so, what they're going to do is actually Mozilla intends to mirror a change in the Snap that they made on the Windows version of Firefox that will add the ability to only lo load one locale at a time based on your system locale. So that makes sense. So it doesn't have to load all those language packs. <laughs> That's always been annoying. And uh, yeah, I get, there's so many great changes uh, coming because of this investigation. I'm really happy it's it's happening and it's really it's really helping Ubuntu to focus on desktop and the desktop apps running nicely and launching. And thank you to Artharon for posting this in Discord. It was awesome. He found it, put it in there. <laughs> Sounds good. I still don't have any desire to run out and, <laughs> and download the Snap. <laughs> install Snap. But yeah. Yeah. Any mechanism to have, uh, you know, in all fairness, I feel the same way about Flatpak. Yeah. And I, I'm still mixed about this, and I'll say it every time it comes up, is I'm not sold containerization for desktop yet. And, but if I had to pick the technology, you know, snap something. I mean, it works, and mm -hmm. they're, they're still working with it. But I do believe, like, Flatpak is a better technology. Yeah. I think so, too. And app images. We can't forget about app images. I don't love. even like talking about it. app images. Is, <laughs> app images has a uh, interesting problem of like, they're great. Just don't don't look at the developer, the yeah. creator of app images. <laughs> Stay away from that because that's a ball of crazy. Um, but I've even had the displeasure of interacting with. All right. Kernel 519 is out. Release candidate one. And, you know, I, I kind of had a sad, Jill. Oh, why were you sad I then? did. Um, it hurt my feeling. Well, <laughs> what happened was, it's like, oh, look, 519 RC1. I'm going to download this and let's grab the real time patch set. Da, 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 da. And I got through that. I compiled it, um, generated my Debian packages to upgrade Jackbox. Then I remembered that I put an NVIDIA card in it. Oh, okay. Running the proprietary drivers. I'm like, yeah. right. <laughs> can't use that quite yet and i didn't feel like checking so i had a little bit of a sad i was like oh i wanted to play with 519 rc1 but i couldn't oh yeah so you know uh linus torvalds uh, just released linux kernel 5.19 rc1 and it does bring a lot of changes this is actually a big release including new hardware support and updates across cpu gpu networking storage and core modules and one of the things that's really interesting in this release is that it be begins initial support for the Long Arch CPU family that is developed by the Chinese com company Long Sun. I don't know if I'm saying that right, or Lung Sun. So Long Arch CPUs are the general purpose MIPS architecture compatible microprocessors that are 64-bit. So this, this, it's a very innovative innovative CPU and it's been around a while and it's it's nice to have that Linux support for them because I've noticed a lot of servers starting to use them and, and applications. And it also comes with the new Intel IFS driver, 
which helps to de detect hardware issues before deployment and after. And it will help actually detect CPU faults at the circuit level at an early stage. So it's nice to have uh, some more troubleshooting <laughs> mechanisms in the Linux kernel. That's <laughs> a joy. And uh, the other really big thing about this mainline Linux kernel is it now will support multiple, not just single, but multiple ARM platforms. And this, this process had, had started with Linux 3.7 and it has spanned more than a de with a more than a decade of work and patches, but now it is here. So you can have lots of different ARM processors um, working with Linux from the kernel level. So very exciting there. And don't forget, you got support for that Apple in one. <laughs> yes. N V M E. Always, uh, I, man, come on, Apple, release two or three more generations so I can buy that first gen M1 brick for like 300 bucks. I want to play with one really bad. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Always surprised to see anybody messing around with uh, the MIPS architecture because in reality, mm -hmm. like the only reason the MIPS even exists right now is for budget routers. Yeah, that is true. In that your is house, true. you got a MIPS processor <laughs> if, and by budget, I mean, sub 500, sub $300, you know, stuff that you're going to get from a net lot gear. Of networking. Links, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, prices go up significantly when you switch over to ARM64. Ask me how I know. Um, but mm -hmm. speaking of ARM, mm -hmm. I saw that Jim Keller, everyone knows who Jim Keller is. He's taped out a bunch of famous chips, and wherever he goes, uh, CPUs tend to get really good. Um, yeah. You know, he definitely co designed, or, you know, with Ryzen, with AMD. You know, when mm -hmm. Ryzen went from Bulldozer to hey, AMD went from Bulldozer to Ryzen. That was kind of a fun time. And we have the AMD that we had today, which was not the AMD that existed five or six years ago. He came out and he publicly said that AMD should have stuck with a K12, which AMD was working on an ARM CPU. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Something they'd been toying with, you know, for the server class and something like that. And it's easy for like hindsight's 2020 because you see what Apple's done with ARM with the M1 and M2 which is very impressive. And I see a lot of people online that were saying, yeah, AMD shouldn't, you should have stuck with ARM. See what AMD couldn't have done that though. Mm. They couldn't have done that. And we're talking about the AMD that had to sell their headquarters and lease it back to themselves. Oh. They were so strapped for cash. They okay. didn't have the money, yeah. but yeah. What do you think? Do you think we'll ever see like an AMD arm Intel arm non X86 in our future before we're too old to compute? Uh, yeah, hard to say. Hard, hard to say. I think they are they're they are just uh, doing so well with their um, current architecture. <laughs> I, I don't uh, see that they have a need really because there's already people in the ARM space. <laughs> well, that mean there's Apple. Yeah, there there is Apple. Um, I I think we will see actually AMD you know, working on ARM before, before we pass. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I want options, you know, x86 is, I mean, it still works, but when you see the performance and power efficiency, it's the power efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's definitely a, a thing. Uh, because I can sit back and say, no. yeah, you know what? I wouldn't mind a little desktop, with like 90 little alarm cores running at it, drawing like 150 watts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you know what? Um, yeah, that's a good question, Ben, because I'm I'm thinking where it would, the first application they could use something like that in is, 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 is in their APUs they use for laptops and low-powered devices. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I could definitely see them using ARM for that. But on the desktop, I'm not, not sure, but maybe. Because they're doing so well with Ryzen. I guess I can't think beyond that. I guess it <laughs> all comes down to... Uh, innovation. <laughs> well, as a lot of people point out, most of us are sitting on more compute power than we ever would normally use. Yeah. Mm, I don't and know. Like they're the, getting Ryzen more power efficient, and they're you know the chips are getting smaller. So They're getting smaller. Uh, and they're still managing, you know, like the... Uh, what I would call like mid-grade... Stuff is around 65 watt TDP, which is more than manageable. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, oh, man, let's talk about this real quick. I, AMD did release some sad news. Good news and sad news. Threadripper is alive and well. Threadripper will continue oh. on. We don't have to worry about Threadripper going away. I'm having difficulty <laughs> saying Threadripper for some thread reason. Threadripper, Threadripper, Ripper. Threadripper. Say it three times. <laughs> I said it like four times. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you say it four times? Huh? Thread ripper, thread ripper, thread ripper, <laughs> thread ripper. I want to put that on loop. Thanks. <laughs> um, check this out. So thread ripper is going to continue on. AMD made that announcement this week, and we don't have because people are like, "Oh, they're going to get rid of it since you know the desktop processors are already up to like uh, what sixteen core, thirty two thread, you know, mm-hmm. they're high end <laughs> on that." And, you know, reason is like, well, why would you need Threadripper? AMD kind of thought the same way. So what's going to happen is the regular vanilla Threadripper is going away. They're not going to be yeah. two product stacks because traditionally you had yeah. Threadripper and introduced last year was Threadripper Pro that you couldn't get your hands on unless you bought a Lenovo. So because it was made widely available to system integrators. So, yeah, Threadripper by itself is going away. R.I.P. Little Buddy, my little 1920X, um, <laughs> which makes me a little bit sad, though, because that filled an interesting niche. I understand I'm not a large market, but for somebody who needed basically just the PCI lanes, you uh, know, I needed, you know, four by 16, and really I needed five or six, and that's where we come into, like, Threadripper Pro. You know, because then you can get the full 128 lanes with uh, like you'd normally get with Epic. So you could have like eight or nine easily. Yeah. But Very nice. Red Ripper Pro is not in my price range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is the the like, Red Ripper you have is a nice kind of a, a go between between workstation and server class. It's, right. It's something that you can, it, it has enough mm-hmm. lanes in it where I can plug in the hardware that I need. And I don't have to spend, you know, starting with, oh, well, how much of a difference? This was a very mm-hmm. expensive motherboard. You know, I, this is almost a $400 motherboard. But you know what? I can eat a $400 motherboard, but I can't eat, Jill. This yeah. is a Threadripper Pro motherboard starting at $1,000. Oh, yes. Yes. For the motherboard. Yeah, We're, just for I, the motherboard. I haven't gotten to the <laughs> $3,000 CPU. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I paid 800 for my first Pentium Pro motherboard mm-hmm. back in the day. <laughs> I'm not looking uh, forward to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, I, I, I'm a little bit sad about that. So now I'm like laser focused. I'm watching because I had to catch the Gen 2 Threadripper at its peak because eventually, because you know, they go the, the little bump, they will uh, mm-hmm. do the dip. When retailers are like, okay, we're never going to get any more of these. Let's just go ahead and fire sell them. Yeah. Then, then there's that nanosecond where the people try to collect things. The vintage computer crowd comes in and tries to buy them up. Then the value starts coming up because they're rare or something yes. like that. <laughs> like, yes, this is a rare CPU. It's like, what, do you only make like, what, two billion of them? Like, well, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, there's my little rent in the middle of the show. Now, <laughs> We all love Google, right? We get Google accounts. Nothing but Google for days. Oh, I want Google Plus back. <laughs> yeah. I want Google Drive on the desktop, Jill. I'm still uh, waiting 10 absolutely. years later. <laughs> 10 years? We've been waiting? 10 years. It's been a decade. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're any day now, Google. Any day now. <laughs> uh, so you probably get some Google in your life, whether or not you want it. Um I don't have any excitement. That's something we talked about in the pre-show is, you know, we've been around for long enough to where Google was that weird little scrappy upstart with like 10 or 15 employees yeah. doing crazy things. And <laughs> now it's just this omnipresent corporation, like everything else that, you know, like, ah, it's around, it's a thing, but they do things, interesting things sometimes. And mm-hmm. you know, we got Android out of that. But another thing, Chrome OS, but you might have a Chromebook dealt with a Chromebook, looked at a Chromebook, passed a uh, Chromebook on a jogging trail, but then you need to give me some more answers because I got more questions. But there's another version of Chrome OS that you can basically just put on anything you want. And I'm talking about Chrome OS Flex. You know, you can put that on a PC, a Mac, and it's just going to run. 
It's a cloud first operating system, which means, man, mm -hmm. you like to live dangerously, is all I can say. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, basically, with this, you get a Chromebook, you get a Chromebook, whatever you got laying around the house can get a Chromebook. Can we call it a Chrome top, a Chrome station? What do you call Chrome yeah. OS on a desktop PC? I don't know. What, uh, Chrome OS Flex running on a standard PC? Anyway. Chrome OS Flex is ready for testing and images are available. All you need to install this Linux-based mm. operating system is a copy of Windows. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Or OS, Mac OS. Or okay, Mac first OS, thing. Yes. <laughs> this, let's just go ahead and get into this dodgy territory. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to try because me and Jill both went through this. Try Chrome OS Flex. I'm going to do that, and it's going to say, well, then, give me all of this information. And you know what I did? I did, mm -hmm. which first made me wonder. Because, like, hey, you can put this on a thumb drive and pop it in. It's like, maybe I want to try this out. And uh, Google, just between me and you, you already have all this information. Why, why are you trying to double dip? Uh, you don't need to do any of this. You don't need to do any of this, because all this does is take takes you to a help document that says, <laughs> yes, install the Chrome Chromebook recovery utility, plug it in Chrome and create a USB image. I did. And I went to create it, which it said, I only support windows and Mac. Yes. So, so I think this is, might be the first, first time that windows was a requirement for Linux. Yeah. That's so annoying. I just, I thought it would be an ISO that I could easily download. We both know install. it is an ISO that you can just yeah, download. Yeah, exactly. And, and they just, yeah, packaged it for Windows. <laughs> it's so I, annoying. Again, I remember when Google used to be cool. Not anymore. Yeah. Like, this is the most nonsensical. Like, ah. Yeah, at first when I saw, you know, let's put the company name and all that, and I just did something fake. Nope. You know, to go to the next screen and <laughs> and then I found out oh no I need Windows to install this uh, Linux uh, on my Linux machine <laughs> what <laughs> oh Chrome OS I don't know I wanted to Chromeo play around with OS <laughs> Chromios yeah it. as Jordan says <laughs> Chrome OS Flex so if you're playing around with it uh, send a message into the show we got a contact form let us know how it runs and what it runs on because that's what i wanted to do i wanted to feed it to because i got some old boxes here in the studio yeah, like these uh, dell 3010s yeah and i was like hey can this get up and running also what i wouldn't mind googs which might actually be usable for somebody like me which would get me mo way more interested is a version of chrome os flex for android tablets mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be awesome. Then you could get that tablet you've been wanting. <laughs> I could just put it on the, the stack of tablets that I have. I'm like, hey, yeah, can I repurpose exactly. this? And you're like, oh, all right. That might be usable with a keyboard. I don't know. That that was just, I wanted to share that experience with everyone of like, yes, this would be interesting. Let's try out this Linux-based operating system. Oh, I can't because I don't have a copy of Windows. Yeah, I don't, not Lovely. running Windows. <laughs> And uh, this has a caveat, though. It has to be a 64-bit machine with at least 4 gigs of RAM, which I just realized is really quite odd and interesting because Chromebooks often only have 2 gigs of RAM. <laughs> so Maybe like the basic, basic budget ones. Yeah, yeah. They Most of them now have uh, 4 but gigs. But then again, this is for old laptops. and Yeah, and that's why I was surprised because I thought there should be a 2 gig you know, Not for an old laptop. Yeah. You'd have to go pretty far back to find a laptop <laughs> that only had two gigs of RAM. Like, well, what if you want to put Chrome OS uh, Flex on an already existing uh, Chromebook that has only <laughs> two gigs of RAM? Why? See, this is like one of the things, though. Like, I don't even know if you could. A. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but that'll be an interesting experiment. <laughs> yeah, this is designed for old desktops on old laptops. Yeah. Oh, and I know, like, you have to go back at least a decade before you would start seeing 32 bit. Yeah. 32 bit, much less like 
less than four mm-hmm. gigs of memory. I think that's a reasonable requirement. Yeah, it, it is. And honestly, this is really great for schools because they can use existing infrastructure. Schools on a budget, right? Yeah. Exactly. Instead yeah. of like re-upping everything. Oh man, I got a couple mm-hmm. of friends that work in um, North American school systems that have Chromebooks. Those things get murderated. Murdered. Yeah. Yeah. Just decimated, which, you know, part of me as an adult looking at that going, oh, that's horrible. But trying to remember <laughs> back to like primary, secondary school, I'm like, yeah, probably would have been pretty rough because I think about my textbooks. Yeah. I remember those? Yeah. Because they treat Whoops. them like textbooks. Yeah. <laughs> Chromebooks oh, are textbooks now. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we got a little <laughs> bit of pie to talk to everyone about. Before we do that, uh, we want to thank each and every one of you making the show possible we had a bunch of new twitch subs and reoccurring subs i even see don m three subbed 20 months imagine mm-hmm. that that is crazy that is insane but if you want to help us out get some cool stuff in return you can do that head over to patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast we got a bunch of different membership levels with a bunch of different rewards for helping us and that's yeah. pretty neat up to and including we got a bonus hour of material we do the pre-pre super shows and each and every week this week will include a semi-spoilery review of dr strange yeah things like that we still talk about it cool. and if you like the show you want some more tech in your background you get the live and uncut version of this podcast format customized rss feed just for you <laughs> come say hi in our discord but as always our discord live show channel is bridged between twitch and and IRC. You can find out more information on that at linuxgamecast.com. Click that live button. It will be there. Plenty of ways to support us. Keep it as loud. Live, independent. We even have Amazon wish list. If you want to yeah, we do. buy something that blinks for Jill in the cups. <laughs> and there's that poor Kingston drive. That we're just we're just not going to get that out of principle because it's an old friend of the show at this point. Yes. <laughs> I've been waiting for that one. My hubby did gift me one from my wish list that was a a gig, <laughs> the <laughs> Kingston gig, and and I'm using that one right now. In fact, but and if you get I anything also, off of our wish zone, we yeah, going to read a little note that you can send in. That's the uh, one for the studio. Yes. That one is radically expensive stuff. So, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. You know what? This is not. Uh, is that a good deal? One ninety nine. I mean, considering it was originally three hundred thirteen bucks. Yeah. Actually, uh, that's that's really good. Is it is it uh, M.24? It's M.2. Uh, no, nah, it's by three. You're not. Oh, by three. Okay. Kids, <laughs> do not waste money buying. By three. You're <laughs> yeah, never well... going to saturate that with any practical anything. Trust <laughs> me. I know a lot about this. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I just bought uh, um, a new motherboard that has support for four. So, mm-hmm. and me and me. So, I went ahead and got it. But I do want to thank. Uh, Mir PPC in chat, and one of my favorite people and uh, LGC uh, patron. Um, he gifted me the game uh, Vampire Survivors from Steam uh, so I could play it on my Steam Deck. So thank you so much, Mir. I've just started playing it, and I got to the third level and died pretty quickly because it's actually a hard game. But I'm going to continue with it because it was really fun, and the controls were really nice on the Steam Deck to play it. Hmm. Classic game. <laughs> That uh, it it did its rounds. Um, mm-hmm. It's a reasonably new game. When did it come out? A couple of months ago. Yeah. Well, it's very old school. Like uh, the play wise, it's very. It it, it looks like. Uh, oh yeah, uh, I played yeah. it. Yeah. Mir inflicted <laughs> a copy on me, and I played it for like three minutes. And like, nope. oh, you did. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, this is not my. I got a list of stuff I gotta go back and play. I might give it some attention one day. So. Thank you, each and every one of you. Uh, stick around for your names and the credits and all that fun stuff. Uh, pretty interesting getting to do what we do the way we do it. Mm-hmm. And you allow that. Now, we got to talk about laptop pies. And yeah. you know what? This is the best uh, Google could do when I search for a laptop pie. <laughs> An apple pie? <laughs> and you know... A square apple pie. That, oh, a, a, a Mac mini apple pie. That's, that's kinda, what that is. That's kind of what it is. Yeah. Kind of looks like that. It's like a normal pie, except it's $1,000 more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good find, Ben. <laughs> and it doesn't come with a power cable. <laughs> so, let's talk about crow pie. Yeah. This is as the crow pies. <laughs> I had to put that in there. 
<laughs> instead of the crow flies. So anyways, <laughs> a little silly. But this is the Crow Pie L uh, kit which transforms a Raspberry Pi into a laptop with only a little assembly required. And it's a, a, a shell of a laptop. Actually, everything is included except the Raspberry Pi. So it has a display, keyboard, battery, and all the other components you would need. And it's got 11.6 inch screen, a built-in keyboard, touchpad, mic, two megapixel camera, stereo speakers, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Thank you for, for the audio jack. Uh, 5,000 milliwatt amp or, uh, battery and a fan. I'm going to break in right now. <laughs> what you can't see is they, they have with the kit that you can get a Pi 4 8 gig for $157, Woo-hoo. which is cheaper than I've seen a Pi 4 8 gig on the internet nice. for months. Yeah, actually. <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so we have actually talked about uh, laptops uh, from this company before and earlier models. This is the most useless yeah, Zoom know. thing. Like, I know, the Zoom is... What? Yeah. That... <laughs> it doesn't zoom in far enough for me. <laughs> It technically, it, yeah, it makes it look wobbly. That's how little of a zoom it is. Yeah, it's very, very slight. Uh, I I still have to use my uh, Magnus uh, screen magnifier to, to go now, through I that website. I have a very real question, though. <laughs> I, I have one problem with all of this. Maybe, maybe possibly not this. Uh, okay. <laughs> maybe not, because every picture I've seen of this thing, and there's quite a ton of pictures on the site, is a render. Yeah. I'm not seeing like an actual picture of this. And that always worries me. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, again, we have talked about earlier models before, but this one is nice because you can pre order it now from the Elecro website for just over $200. And you don't need to back a crowdfunding campaign like the previous versions. Mm hmm. And the previous models actually required some assembly in order to connect everything. But in this one, everything is assembled. All you got to do is pop in a Raspberry Pi for Model B. Uh, it isn't compatible. This this model is not compatible with the Raspberry Pi 3. So you have to get a previous model for that. Well, but I'm looking at their starter kit. Nice. I, I like that. Yeah. I like that because, you know, people of a certain age are like, oh, that's like an old Heath kit. Yeah, it is. It's like an old grief kit, what we used to call these kits back in the day. You know what? LCDs, I mean, this is a completely different pro- product of theirs, but I mean, yeah, yeah, they're into this education stuff. What we need, bring back the heat kit with, you know, high voltage. Ah, uh, yes. And tubes. <laughs> we need to have a tube amp in that laptop. <laughs> uh, to, in order to be a heat kit. Let's take a... Perfectly good, clean, pristine audio signal and mess it up with a tube Aww. and charge people extra money for it. Oh, man. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this week. Mm-hmm. Thanks for stopping yeah. by, watching us live if you can. If you can, after the fact, we're available virtually everywhere you can get a podcast. I don't think there's a place. Uh, if there is, write in. Let me know. <laughs> I think yes. we have all the basics covered. You could even watch our video version on Spotify because that's the thing we do now. But we got to get out of here before we do. Yeah. Let's roll some credits. Yay. And thank all our wonderful patrons. Woohoo. Yay. Thank you all so much. We wouldn't be doing this without you, really. We got our beautiful advisors like Omega. And we got and our Arthur. Theron checking in. Uh, executive <laughs> producers Barbara and Scott M. Atomic Ass, Mike G. Empty Drummer, Seven Kohaku, Pebble, and somebody I didn't catch. Dark Wing and Abstraction bringing in Chicago. That's a lot. <laughs> I know what it's about. Plenty of sea, sea monsters. monsters. Rhetoric's mocking a truggy very new to Justin Strider, Frostbach. Strider, Nevin. <laughs> Death Notes. Benjamin, Doom, 2 Watt, Dot Wad. Cherlings. Everyone else. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I can't read that fast. I gave you your minute, man. I started yeah. to read about it. I was like, take the floor, Jill. Cherlings. <laughs> yeah, Cherlings. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. We'll see you again next week. <laughs> okay, bye, 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 all you guys. We love you all. <laughs>